Yo, what is up guys, what is poppin'? We are here with IDM finals of season 2, finally. Um, I think my semi-finals match went up like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Um, Sky, my opponent, and I were kind of busy these last couple of weeks and um, he was kind of shook because he's uh, he's from England and the fucking, fucking England uh, English man, they dropped out of the world cup and he was he was shook like he had to had to um had to drink a couple of beers too many to uh, get over it so <laughs> we weren't able to play when they <laughs> when they when england lost their world cup semi-finals so uh, i feel that i feel that and <laughs> we are finally here <laughs> and are able to play our finals match for the season two title of course we um won last season so we're trying to go back to back um, with my boy McGiena Godlimon that um, carried us through the season kind of but um, this guy just like I um, both of us we um, only have two losses in this uh, two losses this season uh, we played in week six I think where he was undefeated but I got to beat him um, in a pretty close match like it was like 70 turns or 80 turns um, pretty close and tough match because his team is super scary and yeah, we um, obviously have to, had to come up with some um, some fire strat to um, to be able to beat him. So the team he brought, uh, the team he has, pretty much eleven months: Atapulele, Z Garchomp, Infernape, Mega Venusaur, Gotharita, Umbreon, Aerodactyl, Empoleon. Um, let me see what else he brought. Um, Snorlax, of course, and Electros, I think. Yeah, maybe I'm missing one, but it uh, doesn't really matter. So, um, yeah, here's a here's a pretty pretty sick team, like Garchomp, Infernape, Tapu Lele, all fuck up my squad. He has Trapping, um, just like we do with Gothita. He has Gotharita, um, which is kind of scary, kind of scary indeed. And it makes some of my strats that I had kind of redundant because... Um, a lot of mods that were usually doing pretty well versus um, versus his squad are um, useless because they just get trapped and shut down by Gotharita. And Gotharita actually can come in hard on some of these threats, so I'm kind of mm, forced to double every time I'm um, every time I'm uh, bringing bringing in those mods. So I had to come up with a threat that doesn't force me to. Um, to make too many switches and to um, that um, keeps the pressure up so he can't um, go with his bulky trapping approach if he wants to bring that. Um, Sky has shown in the semifinals that he is able to mix it up depending on his opponent. Um, he completely out my boy Jacko um, despite having like in my opinion the inferior matchup but um, he brought some nice nice strategies that really fucked up Jacko's, um, Jacko's preferred builds I would say. So uh, we gotta get out of our comfort zones so we can um, so we can like counter prep his counter prep pretty much. So um, I expect him to really prepare for my bulk a lot. So um, I try to build a mon that uh, build a squad that keeps the pressure up that doesn't force me to make switches into my fat stuff because we will be we will bring solid breakers and mons that can abuse my fat fat mon and. Um, a squad that doesn't force me to make like too many uh, too many like safe plays, too many safe switches. So um, I like kind of took a took a page out of my boy Matty Brolic's um, playbook and built a squad that um, doesn't like that where really I can stay in with some of my win conditions to like just get chip damage off, so another mon can become the main win condition. So the team I built was um, pretty much. Three win cons. Um, one is Channel Flame, one is my boy Lopani, and one is Magiena. So those three are, um, are my main win cons here, and the rest of the squad is designed to help those win cons out and to have like um, some middle ground, uh, mid ground play um, into some threats, so I can um, so I can switch, um, so I can make some switches if need be. So um, Channel Flame here was the first one that I put on the team. Um, his team has like two flying resists. One is the Electros, and one is the um, one is the Empoleon. I don't count Aerodactyl because that thing is not coming, and I think um, that like 
regardless of um, my coverage, Aerodex will always be talent link, so it's kind of kind of redundant to uh, kind of redundant to have um, anything for Aerodex. So his only answers to talent flame are pretty much um, strong special attackers like Takulele, um, as well as his two flying resistant Empoleon and Electros. Thing is, with my investment, um, Empoleon and uh, not Empoleon, Electros can't beat me one versus one because a max special attack like Assault vs Electros does um, like 44% if I lose with T Bolt or Bolt Switch. So doesn't it isn't the best check because I can roost up on it all day if need be and get to plus um, plus three or four. So if I like am able to like damage it before a seven flame comes in, it's not really a counter anymore. Um, and Polyon is really tough for my team to wear down. I I'm not sure if it's coming, but I like I have some counter measures to it with my Lopan and my Magirna. So um, that being said, <laughs> this set absolutely goes in. Um, it shuts down his fat stuff with taunt, like Snorlax can't curse up on me um, if I play carefully. Um, Garchomp can't SD up on me. At plus one I live a Z outrage from um, Garchomp from full easily, so it's like 87 max. Um, it shuts down Mega Venusaur if it wants to Leech Seed or um, Leech Seed or Sleep Out on me. Um, with leftovers, um, a sludge bomb into sludge bomb poison into another sludge bomb is not a 2 KO versus me. Um, sludge bomb plus poison plus lefties does never more than 50% pretty much, which is pretty clean. Um, Talon Flame function is a back backup check to my opponent's Infernape. Um, Infernape usually can't run coverage for um, for Talon Flame if it's a if it's a setup variant because SD has to run Mark Punch for Lopany, um, as well as dual stab for Magina and um, Licky Licky, for example, and stuff like CUQ and so. Kinda is forced into close combat flare blitz slash fire punch, or uh, and mark punch if he runs um, if he runs a variant that um, runs sword sense. And if he is scarf, um, Teleflame kinda checks it unless he's Stone Edge, and I can easily scout for that because I bring a dedicated Inferno counter um, to this to this game. Um, at plus two, I pretty much two hit KO his entire squad. I two hit KO Garchomp. I two hit KO Snorlax unless he's max defense, and even then I have like a very solid chance to two hit KO off their spike. Um, I Bob Mega Venusaur at plus three, I think, if he's physically defensive. At plus two, if he's specially defensive, which I kind of expect because Spadef Mega Venu um, is a very solid check to Magirna. It can potentially like. Beat off the tell one versus one if I run psychic. It checks my Nahele go well, and yeah, overall, it's like if Venusaur doesn't need much fist versus me because most Venusaurs um, check Lopani very well um, as long as they have like some investment in physical defense. He could run, he could be like bold, but with max special defense or something like that. So he can shoot hit, hits from Lopani and also like from Nahele and Magiena. Mm. Yeah, Talon Flame like pretty pretty simple set. Um, sadly, I <laughs> sadly Gale Wings isn't as good as it was in Gen Six, and I can't um, completely say yeah fuck you speed and go more into bulk. But with this investment, I still like get all the chaos that I need. Um, 24 EVs in attack allow me also to um, guaranteed Oko Infernip from full if he's uninvested. So that's kind of clean, and like, the bulk overall makes me two hits pretty decently. Um, at plus two, um. A plus six facade from Curse Legs, for example, or from Belly Drum Legs is only a only a roll to two KO from full. I think with lefties, um, it's even in my favor if I'm at plus two defense, so that's kind of clean. <laughs> but yeah, this is one of my win cons. Next up is my Lopani, which doesn't really look win con ish at all at first because it's like just two attacks and then support moves. But this thing can go in if he brings a bulky approach. Um, return two KO is pretty much his entire team. Um, this, the stuff that isn't too killed by return is too killed by drain punch. Um, I opted for drain punch over over um, high jump kick because I think he would probably run protect on some of his sets to um, make me crash and because um, Lopani will function kinda as a hard switch into Snorlax potentially because my team doesn't really deal with Snorlax too well especially if he gets curse up and I have to potentially go hard into Hard into lob um, with uh, so I you know, on Snorlax so I can encore him into curse and then deal with that thing. So um, drain punch is useful for recovery in that case. 
Um, Encore by Tompa is pretty self-explanatory because o Encore obviously um, <laughs> helps me 1v1 a Mega Venusaur because you can just Encore him into Synthesis if he switches in hard on Love Honey. With a spike up, um, he is kind of forced to Synthesis up even if he's physically defensive um, because Return does like 40 from Adam and Lob. <laughs> and yeah, and with the spike he's pretty much um, close to 2 KO unless he Synthesizes up and then like you can just Encore him into that and fire off strong returns. He doesn't really have to switch into Lopani <laughs> because especially defensive Napoleon if he is the, if he is that <laughs> is too KO'd by return into drain punch <laughs> which is pretty clear. He's physically defensive I don't too KO but after a spike it's a roll so that's kind of clean. The Tom is here so that I don't get um, trapped by Gotharita but this Lopani if Gotharita tries to um, come and up on, Go on Lop I can just Encore it so it's not really a threat because Gotharita Psy shocks like the bounce do like 50, so I can um, pretty much chew at least one most of the time. Um, Lopani is also like my main revenger for threats like Garchomp. Um, I need some chip um, on Garchomp with like either Talon Flame or one of my bulkier mons that I bring. Um, so return kills, but um, with ice coverage on some of my bulkier mons, um, return once I get the ice uh, uh, ice attack off, return always gets the kill, so that's kind of clean. Um, yeah, Lopani, like I said, it's pretty simple, um, enough speed for Infernape and then like max attack and rest in bulk. Um, pretty, pretty solid set, but the same as switchings are really limited, so um, I'm kind of hoping this Lopani puts in the work. Third win con and um, probably the least reliable win con, but a mon that I felt I had to bring because it's so good overall, if, uh, depending on what he brings, is Magiena, because Magiena can, mm, can abuse some um some of his fed up builds easily to get um to plus two with the command to plus two with speed with the shift gear and then like really go ham um flash can focus blast pretty much hit his entire team for neutral uh, for neutral damage um i bop infernape after a spike with a plus one focus blast which is clean i two it ko garchomp with flash can and plus one um even if he's max hp i chew an earthquake from scarf chomp so um if he is scarf and outruns me after i get the I get the shift gear off, I shoot a hit and I can um, <laughs> I can um, probably revenge kill him with the flash can because I will try to set up with Magina once I have weakened the guard from where it is in range of a flash cannon. <laughs> um, it abuses um, Mega Venusaur because Mega Venusaur Mega Venusaur's only move is Earthquake and Earthquake is not a free KO unless he's invested, so that's kinda clean uh, because this Magina is so bulky. Um, it shoots a flare blitz from Scarf Ape, which I felt could come versus me because um, it's his best re and most reliable revenge to Magiana and Megalopani, as well as to a Talon Flame because like Infernape can run Stone Edge. So pick a Scarf is a very likely bring on his part. Um, plus one Focus Blast, two Kill Snorlax, plus one Flash Cannon, Bob's pretty much everything. It occurs Tapu Lele. Uh, Magiana also like can kind of switch into non specs Tapu Lele fairly, fairly well because Psychic like just like 20, 27 to 35 or something. <laughs> which is pretty clean unless he's like boosting item, which I hope he's not because Tapu Lele with a boosting item is a pretty big threat to my team. But um, Venusaur gets two KO'd by a plus two flash cannon, which is nice and I can easily get the plus two in this. Um, I absolutely abuse Umbreon. Umbreon doesn't get any move that can um, fuck up Magiana. Um, I chew hits from Electros really well once I get a Karmite off. I um, can use Magiena as a backup check to, mega, uh, to regular Aerodactyl if he brings it, even though Earthquake does a lot with his life off or something. Um, I chew hits from Empoleon fairly well, and Focus Blast is a 2 KO on, on Empoleon once I get a Calm Mind or a Beast bo uh, or Solar Boost up, so that's pretty clean. <laughs> the speed is here just to outrun his fastest mod, which is Inferno at plus 2, so I was able to afford a lot of bulk <laughs> on this Magiena, which is pretty, pretty clean. Mm. So the, <coughs> the reasoning, like, or not really the reason, but the idea behind the squad is to win with one of these three pretty much. Um, and the good thing is that all three of those can remove some threats um, that check the others. Like Talonflame beats Talonflame and Lopani beat Snorlax one vs one, um, so that Magiena can or does not have to worry about it. Both of them also beat Mega Venusaur one vs one, so that's the second check to Magiena. Um, Magiena can beat Magiena and Lopani beat Empoleon with Focus Blast and Drain Punch. So Talonflame can can sweep, both of them beat Electros, so the can, Talonflame can sweep, and so on. Like both get necessary chip on Garchomp, so um, Lopani can revenge. 
And Terraflame obviously get rid of Infernape if need be so that Longfunny can sweep as well. So uh, pretty 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 solid idea I think behind the scene. And now I have to like figure out um now I have to figure out what uh, which three mons I had to um bring around those three to um really maximize their potential. The first mon I, I put on there uh was the Gothic Tail because Gothic Tail allows me to guarantee check and 1v1 um, Tapu Lele with the Psychic Seed. Spex Tapu Lele can't do a Kaomi with Moonblast, uh, which is really nice. I can switch in, get the Psychic Seed up, and uh, rest up on the, on the next turn. Then like get nice Deep Talk rolls, hopefully, and <laughs> get a Karmite up so I can't... so I can um, beat him 1 versus 1, pretty much. And like, with Psychic Seeds, none of his mons really can... Um, can beat me one versus one, which is pretty nice. Obviously, it's an Umbreon, but I don't expect Umbreon to come because Umbreon is free. It's free setup for Megian. I don't think he wants to risk that. Um, he doesn't want to be the next in line to get bopped by Megian, so I think he will over prep heavily for it and don't bring Umbreon. Um, but this Gothic Tail allows me to um, pretty much guarantee the one versus one um, Mega Venusaur because Mega Venusaur's best moves to hit me are Knock Off and um, like pretty much Leech Seed to one v one me. But with Rest and Calm Mind, I I'm easily like beating that one we run one v one even though like the chip um, with through leech chip could be annoying but but like one car mile up I two KO anyway and I can like pretty much sack my golf tail just as long as I get rid of um, Venusaur. If he doesn't bring Tapu Lele that's great because then I like yes I would have wasted an item but it also means that I only have to um, revenge or like to trap one mon with golf tail like the Snorlax or the or the Venusaur. Like this Goth Tail is only designed to pretty much trap um, one or two of three mons. Those are Snorlax, Mega Venusaur, and Tapu Lele, um, all of which it does pretty well. Yes, Snorlax could be a curse variant, which um, could fuck me up because then I probably would lose it. But with a curse variant, I can like just try to get some damage off to see what he wants to do, then go hard into Lopani or into uh, onto Teleflame to taunt or encore it respectively. So it's not really a big threat. <laughs> His Electros is not a is not a uh, Volt Switch variant. I can trap that as well, which could help out Time of Flame fairly decently. Um, if his Empoleon is just standard defensive, I can trap that, <laughs> which is pretty clean, and um, remove that for Talent Flame. So Goth Tail really um, can like it can trap a bunch of stuff that he could bring, but it really is mainly here for Mega Venusaur and potentially Tapu Lele and Snorlax, depending on their stats. Like if I get rid of Tapu Lele, uh, my fatter stuff that I'm gonna bring um, has a better has a better day versus him because um, Tapu Lele like if it specs it two kills my entire boat on my squad. So um, if Godfield is able to remove that, that's pretty clean. So um, even like even if I have to like just switch in onto Goth and um, then go from like go from there, like I can just side shot Goth uh, side shot Tapu Lele once. Um, in terrain and then it's in range of uh, return from Laupani, which is pretty clean. So with the specs Tapu Lele, I can adjust, all I need to do is uh, fire off one side shot with that bad thing instead of trying to um, get the rolls with the with the sleep talk. So that's kind of clean. Um, EVs are pretty standard. I'm not too KO'd by Scarf Flare Blitz, I think, from Troll or by Scarf Earthquake from Chomp. Um, yeah, I think I think that's that's it. Um, the rest is just here, so I don't get like in Spidef, so I don't get bopped by plus. Uh, by Specs Moonblast on the switch and from from um, Tapu Lele. So got to tell here really nice support mon for those three win cons because it can remove some of the mons that wall one of these three. So um, next up I kinda wanted a scarf Suicune. Um, Gypsy recommended it to me to bring a fat um, kinda slow scarf Suicune that just outruns Infernape with like Hydro Pump, Ice Beam, um, Raw and whatever coverage move I wanted. But I felt like if I bring that, yes, I can get a surprise KO on um, on the Garchomp or the Ape. But if I bring it and I remove Garchomp, for example, with the Ice Beam, Goth Gotharita gets a plus 6 from me. I don't, I don't want Gotharita at plus 6 because then I'm forced to um, go into something to haze it and then like pretty much sack 2 months to it, 1 my Suicune and then my Hazer. So I decided to bring another Water type. <laughs> and this is my boy Quillfish, the goat, the goatfish coming to the finals. <laughs> Godly Mon, I'm really a fan of this. Uh, Quillfish gives gives me a nice switch into Inferno. Like no Inferno variant can beat Quillfish one versus one because even plus two plus two Thunder Punch 
doesn't care on me because of the intimidate and because of my book so <laughs> i can just liquidation and get like 70 percent off on this things to like put it in range of god or seven flame or whatever i want to um quillfish also gives me hazards and hazards will be really really crucial in this game i don't expect either of us to like think that the other one will bring removal and i don't think any of us will bring removal i certainly won't and i don't think he will have the move slots for for that and he won't have the ability to um to remove hazards because um because every time he loses momentum with like defog or rapid spin he loses um he, like he gets pressured heavily by my offense because if i if i go hard lob or hard medina or hard talent flame on a defog potentially um he's pretty much He's pretty much forced to sec uh, to sack him on to it to it because his defoggers are pretty are pretty pretty bad versus my offense. Like um, on Empoleon, I could go hard lob honey on or hard Magiana to bop it with a focus bus or drain punch respectively. Um, on Aerodactyl, I can go hard Magiana get a get a free shift gear off or go hard Quillfish and get them get them spikes back up again. So he doesn't really gain anything by bringing removal, uh, which is pretty pretty clean for me. Um, the the investment is, as I said, here to um, to hit from Inferno, but also to um, um, to an earthquake from a bandit chomp, I think, with the sugar berry from full easily, uh, which is pretty clean. So I get, can get an ice beam off an ice beam. Um, ice beam with the 84 special attack EVs does at does min a minimum of 50% to max HP guard chomp, which is pretty clean, um, because that allows me after a spike ice beam into return from Lopani guaranteed um, kills. Gacha, which is pretty huge for my team because my team is pretty slow outside of um, Lopani and Talonflame and Talonflame can't revenge guard jump unless it's like a 30 or so so um, Quillfish allows me with the Sugarberry to kind of lure guard jump even if he gets an assault gets a sword since up I um, guarantee to pretty much bop it with um, ice beam into return which is pretty pretty big um, I contemplated going thunder wave over liquidation but I figured on my um, on my infernal counter I needed them on that like I needed a move that hits Infernal actually because Ice Beam Thunder Wave Spikes Haze doesn't beat Infernal one versus one unless you get like para 70, 17 times in a row. So I figured Liquidation is nice. I don't really need Thunder Wave um, that much because the mons that I would need Thunder Wave for um, are pretty much trapped by God, or like Thunder Wave would just um, would just shift the like RNG a little bit in my favor in case I need to get a Get a shift gear off but i'm not trying to play this game <laughs> i try to get damage off to put everything in range and go from there so that's kind of clean <laughs> i don't need speed on quillfish which is nice because um then i i'm not forced to run bolt or impish with the dual coverage here that i have <laughs> and um, i don't really need to outspeed anything and spikes really really come in clutch with my opponent's team if um if i get up a spike or even two or three which would be pretty clean um I'm like getting chip, the necessary chip on everything by one single switch in because uh, Infernape after a spike is guaranteed in range of focus plus from Vienna guaranteed in range of a return from Laupani. Um, Garchomp is guaranteed in range of a plus two Brave Bird, like a two hit KO from plus two Brave Bird even if it's max HP. So uh, spikes really come in clutch for his, um, for his my opponent and if he brings like a, a squad that relies heavily on momentum like U-turn, Infernape, Voltage, Electros and so on. Um, he gets punished by the spice, which is huge. Um, I don't have rocks on this team, but the only mon that gets hit harder by rocks than spikes on my opponent's squad is the Aerodactyl, and I don't expect that to come, so I'm really, really fine without rocks, <laughs> which is pretty clean. So, there's that. Um, Quillfish also allows me to um, not beat Gotharita 1 vs 1, I don't have a Shed Shell on this, but um, if Gotharita comes in, I can pretty much stack spikes because. Um, Unless he like starts side shocking me, um, now even if he side shocks me, I'm guaranteed to have three spikes on on Gotharita because um, side shock is a three KO and I should outspeed Gotharita unless he runs a lot of speed on this thing, and then I can just spike and if he like tries to set up calm minds on my, on my quillfish, I can just haze um, haze it after I got up, got up my uh, got up my spikes, which is pretty clean, and then like just start the liquidation it, keep it low unless uh, until my quillfish is pretty much that and then I can go into like Talent Flame or Magiena or something to revenge it, which is pretty clean. Um last one on my squad is my boy Licky Licky holding the Shad Shell, Body Slam, Ice Beam Wish Protect. Um I was really really unsure what to bring in this last spot. I sh did shy away from Licky Licky for quite a while because um 
Licky Licky is so passive with some of his stuff, but uh, with the Wish Protect and dual coverage, um, I'm pretty much good versus everything, I think, because if he brings like a substitute spam set that abuses my pet, I break every every month's substitute on my opponent's team bar a substitute Snorlax, and sub Snorlax is encore for love honey, so it's not too big of a deal, and I got full fish through haste, so it's pretty clean. Um, Garchomp is 2 KO per Ice Beam easily, even if he's specially defensive. Body Slam bobs some Tapu Lele's sub, even if he's um, max, max HP. Um, Inferno can't switch in hard on me because Body Slam does like 35 and has the chance to para, and then like Licky Licky would be able to 1 vs 1 the Inferno, which is pretty clean. Uh, Wish Protect allows me, like, obviously to stall out some turns of Terrain, for example, versus, um, versus an offensive Lele. And. It also allows me to like wish on like for example an aggressive switch into Garchomp or um, Snorlax on his side. It allows me to wish into Lob Honey so I can encore stuff, which is pretty clean. It also like just helps me keep my quad, uh, keep my squad healthy. Um, I don't have Dragon Tail on my Licky Licky as I did in um, in week six when we played, but with the Shed Shell I don't need it because I can just hard switch into <laughs> hard switch into Lob Honey and encore got the reset need be. Uh, with the wish up, I can afford to um, hard switch into Lob because the size up is uh, does only like 50 or something, and then I get all my health back, which is pretty clean. So <laughs> that's solid. But yeah, that's pretty much the squad. Um, Lick Licky functioning as the glue to this team, um, allowing me to like stay in on a lot of threats just to get Body Slam and potentially a para off, just to get the necessary chip on Garchomp off, so that I like am never forced to make. Um, Hard reads or aggressive reads that force me to um, that force me to potentially lose a mon until, uh, just so I can get in anything safer to revenge in certain threat. But anyway, that's the plan. Um, winning with one of these three and removing the counters of uh, one of these three mons with the rest of the squad. So uh, I hope this works out. Uh, and I think we should hop into battle. Let me <laughs> let me take a sip of water, mm. and we can go go right into it. So. Uh, let me adjust the <laughs> the thingy here, and yeah, now we're good to go. So you see, my boss guy, he brought the Gotharita, which I was kind of afraid of because my team like kind of hates Gotharita, but it's not like too too bad with me. He brought the Garchomp, which which uh, was guaranteed to come. I think it's an SD Z variant, but I'm not 100% sure. He brought the Mega Venusaur, which I was kind of surprised of, but um, it makes sense because it checks my special attackers fairly well. But um, I figured if he brings it, it's probably a raw variant, so I gotta play my got the uh, tail mindfully. Um, he has the Infernape, obviously, which I expected to come. I think this is like set up Garchomp with this um, choice guard Infernape. He brings some Polion, which is probably his rocker or his removal if he brings it. And he brings a Snorlax, which I thought would come for sure too. So, um, pretty threatening squad, but um, nothing that really surprises me. So, I think we're good to go, but. Um, Definitely like definitely a tricky matchup because my switch ins into stuff like Infernape and Garchomp are so limited. Um, but anyway, I decided to lead off with my Lopani because it pretty much wins every lead matchup he could go for one versus one unless he beats a Chomp and even then I can just return it and go from there because unless he's like Bandit or Z Chomp he can't Oko me so that's kind of clean. <laughs> I decided to lead off with Lopa and he actually leads Garchomp but here I'm like I should just fire off a return because I don't have a switch in anyway. Unless I go hard into Talon on a potential Z Earthquake, um, which would be a fine read, but um, pretty pretty tough to do. <laughs> and like he's kind of forced to um, to scout for the Ice Punch because even if he's max HP, it's a, like a 50% roll to, for me to kill with Ice Punch. And I figured he will try to scout for that. So I'm I'm making the aggressive play and stay into um, return this bad boy because if I get the necessary return ship on Garchomp. Uh, my Terran Flame looks way better, so if I like, like, look at this team, if I get 50% off on Garchomp, um, I only have to remove the Empoleon so that my Terran Flame guaranteed wins, uh, which is pretty clean. So I decide to return turn 1 as he makes a switch into Venusaur. Um, my boy Sky makes a mental error here and he actually told me after the game or during their game that he calked a Mega Venusaur on his switch in, which obviously is not mega yet, so um, he takes... 63 from from a return, which is really really huge, <laughs> um, really fucks him up because um, now he's pretty much forced to sack him on. Like nothing can really switch in, bar Gotharita, and Gotharita can't really do much to me back because he can encore it into into command or rest or whatever. So 
Um, he's really in a terrible spot already from turn one, which is um, amazing for me, but bad for him. Like just because the mental error happened, it's like kind of bad for him. But anyway, um, I obviously gonna click return again as he um, decides to switch on his Gothel return. I get kind of lucky. I get to cri uh, get to crit, which um, kind of matters because now he is forced to rest up with Gothel Rita, which gives me a free encore. But had I not done the crit, I would have done like uh, 40 to him, which is pretty clean. Or like 37, and it would have given me um, the baton pass into my seven flame, which beats Gothel Rita one, one versus one all the time because he can just taunt on his car mind. Um, and like, even with uh, without the crit, he was kind of forced to um, rest up anyway because if he side shots, he gets two KO'd by two more returns because I three KO Gothel Rita guaranteed with the return. Um, I'm pretty sure because like the crit did 57, so um, a regular return would do like. Uh, would be like 37 but because I got the crit I'm kind of free to return again if he goes for side shot I could have got the Rita which opens up my um, Quillfish, my Magirna and my own, own Gothel Tail um, because that gets rid of one of the psychic resist <laughs> and um, yeah if he like side shots me I don't care I don't really need the chip uh, I don't really need HP on Lopani <laughs> so it's kind of clean so I, I return again as you see um, this does 39 so return was guaranteed 3, three KO anyway so he would have been forced to rest up um, after after I after he switched in on the return anyway because otherwise he would have been three KO'd. So um, he rests up here, free encore for me on the next turn, um, which I will go for here. So I can one versus one this this goth. Um, now he's forced to sack a mon because he can just go for a return. He sacks his Mega Venusaur, which I think is his most expendable mon. It doesn't really beat anything on my squad, and I bring the, brought the goth tail, so I'm like. I'm beating this one versus one all day and open it up and open up holes for Magiana to win. So that's kind of clean. Now he brings an Infernape and here I make a big play. Um, Infernape, if it's Choice Scarfed, it's like it's very unlikely that he goes for close combat because I have three um three psychic uh, three ti uh, three fighting resist. That's it. Um, in the back, if he locks himself into close combat, um, and is Scarfed, my Gothitelle guaranteed um. Guaranteed traps it, which is nice because that opens up my my, my Magirna. And like if he if he choice scarfs, he can't like he just can't lock himself into close combat. He has to U-turn here because otherwise he gives me free spikes with Quillfish, gives me a free trap with Goth, give, gives me um gives me free bulk ups with Talent Flame. So that's the reason if he's if he's um U uh, if his scarf is U-turning 100% of the time. And if he's set up, he's gonna double because he can't set up on uh, on Lopani and he can't like just stay in and take a return because then um then like the return has a chance to bop him a uh, very unlikely chance because it's like a six percent chance to oko from full but um, yeah if he like if he's set if he's a setup variant he won't stay in because then he like just loses loses his inferno because if i go into quillfish he doesn't gain anything by setting up because then he's like he takes like 80 from <laughs> from the um from the liquidation doesn't gain shit and because then he's like revenge by seven flame and shit like that. So um there's no way in my opinion that he is clicking close combat here. So I decide to make the play and stay in just because like it's a calculated risk and if he locks himself into close combat I can just trap it so that's not a big deal. And if he like U turns I'm pretty much guaranteed another kill which is pretty pretty big. So um, I decide to stay in and click return. I see it makes a double out into his Empoleon predicting my talent flame or my quillfish probably so uh, I do 31. This is like not a defensive Empoleon. I know I'm guaranteed to Oko with the Drain Punch from here because Drain Punch to not physically defensive Empoleon does like 80 max or like 70 to 80. So this is a guaranteed kill. I go for a Drain Punch here. He has the Chopper Berry, which is smart. Um, and I don't kill. He gets a Liquidation. This does a lot. Like this is an invested Empoleon for sure. But um, this 80% this damage on Empoleon is fucking huge because now my Magirna looks even better. <laughs> at plus one I wouldn't even like I wouldn't even be forced to click focus blast versus this component because plus one or plus two flash can bop this thing for sure unless it's specially defensive. But I think it's like kind of an offensive variant for, uh, on this Empoleon. He afterwards told me that he was SD Aqua Jet Liquidation and Earthquake, which is a pretty clean set versus me. Um I really struggle to revenge it once Lopani gets weakened, but <laughs> as you see, Lopani revenges this Empoleon here as I catch him on the double <laughs> with the Infernape, so Lopani not switching out for eight turns, and I can revenge this Empoleon here. Maybe I should have drain punched here, but I, I, I want to like catch a Garchomp 
for more damage if he wants to switch in. So clean, clean, clean here for me. <laughs> As now he brings in Garchomp and this like um if he wants to kill me he just he will just go into talent uh, he will just go for the earthquake and I can go into talent and there's no way he locks himself into outrage with with a <laughs> with McGinn around. So I can like just um I can just do hard talent here. Scout for the earthquake and then like get to plus one because a plus one defense um a Z outrage from Enham and Garchomp will not knock me out, so that's kinda clean. So I go into my talent flame here. Um being up six four already and now I catch this Garchomp on the on the EQ. Um later he revealed to be banned. I don't know this yet, so I just go for the bulk up as he goes into Goth. Um, I bulk up once as he uh, pretty much brings in his setup for the versus me. Um, I taunt this Goth, get to plus two and then I can fire off. <laughs> Start firing off attacks. He goes into legs, and here I make a misplay. Um, he already said GG in the chat. I'm like, yeah, it might actually be GG uh, because Talonflame now goes in. But I make a misplay, and I don't taunt this taunt this um, Snorlax. I'm kind of afraid of a Bandit set because Bandit Snorlax actually goes in versus me. If he has Bandit um, Bandit Rock Slide, I'd much rather um, get chip damage off the the plays that I should have made here were. Um, Probably go hard into Lopani because then like I can scout to see if he's like just going to attack or and if he's like a setup Baron I can just encore on the next turn so um, yeah I'm like I make the stupid play because I don't taunt or go, don't go hard into Lop and I just attack because um, even if he's like 160 HP or 140 HP and max defense uh, which is very likely said like around 140 to 180. HP I would say because it's not like it usually doesn't need max HP and max defense I um, have like around a 50% percent chance to a KO so if I like get him below 50 and he goes for like a like a belly drum I'm I'm good because that pops would pop his Yapapa yeah, berry for example and then like allow me to to a KO so I just I think like yeah just getting chip on this Snorlax off is huge just because um that also helps my Magina <laughs> my Magina win in the late game so. Um, I go for the Brave Bird, which in hindsight was my worst play. Even if, even had I gone for um, for another another bull cap, that would have been better because a plus six. This Snorlax is a um, a facade variant. A plus six, um, he can't switch here or plus three or plus four um, talent flame, which I should have considered, but I didn't. And I only do forty eight. Um, he gets he gets a decent roll here on this <clears throat> on this turn. See belly drums up. This is kind of scary, but um, not a big deal because by just Clicking Brave Bird all the time, I force him to stay low and um, potentially get a crit at one at one point. So go for Brave Bird again as he recycles. I take a lot of recall here, sadly, because Snorlax is so fat. <laughs> and yeah, he recycles up. So here I'm like, yeah, he 100% going to attack here. Um, I would just go for the Brave Bird to put in range of Lop Honey because if I go hard Lop here um, and he attacks, I'm like in a bad spot. And if he like he can't recycle because if I go into hard into law piece, he's losing a mon again. So um <laughs> Brave for the myself play predicting him predicting him to attack. Yes, I lose my talent flame, which is kinda huge because now I only have one mon that outspeeds Garchomp, which is pretty scary. <laughs> and I lose one Revenger for for Infernip and one mon that beats Gotharita, but um it allows me to potentially win with my Magiana, which is pretty huge. So I go for the <laughs> Brave Bird here <coughs> and he bobs me with the facade. <laughs> Now I can go to Lopani uh, and just revenge it with the with the drain punch or with the return. Yeah, I click return here, trying to like catch everything that wants to switch in, um, so I don't like choke or anything. Now it goes into Gotharita. Um, I the Tom pass out here into Licky Licky, um, just to like catch the damage. Uh, he he side shots and I'm like he probably expects me to like have like Dragon Tail or just go for the wish here. And I get, go for the body slam, get a crit, um, doesn't matter in the long run at all, and um, as you will see later, and like I get nice chip up on, on Inferno, and like a sweep with Lopani on Magina now looks more likely than ever. He goes into Garchomp and like, oh yeah, fuck, I gotta, gotta be mindful of that thing, I don't really want to stay in with, um, oh no, I doubled out here on the, on the Inferno into Quillfish, as he caught it, I, <laughs> I had to go on, Hard Garchomp with my Licky Licky, I definitely would have ice cream, but um, yeah, he goes into Garchomp on a very nice double here, which gets him kind of back into the game. Like, he's so far behind, um, he has to make those aggressive doubles to get a kill. But I go into Quillfish and I get the get the attack off here, <laughs> and I will just go for the ice beam trying to catch this. But um, he makes a smart play, and probably knowing that he can't kill me at minus at minus one if I'm Sugar Berry or something, he makes a smart play and goes into Goth to trap me. 
Um, now I'm just getting up my spikes because spikes put a burn up and got some in range for Magiana and for Lopani and for Lukiliki and for Gothita for everything pretty much. And the um, Carmine's up, goes for a third Carmine and I'm going to haze here. He told me that he contemplated side shocking in this turn, but it actually would not have mattered because I live the side shock anyway and I could have hazed, hazed him. So he side shocks this 37 as you see, like plus two with like 75. 74. I go for the liquidation. I get a defense drop, which is pretty big. Um, because like um, he can't really stay in now because then Lopani revenges him if I if I get another if I get another liquidation off. And now I go for the ice beam because if he switches out into guard jump, this is a, almost a dead guard jump, which is super huge for me. So I'm like, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm like trying to like catch a guard jump. I'm not trying to freeze him here or any, anything. I know he will probably run, uh, go for the side shot, and if he rests up, I can just like start um, liquidation him for like 20, 28% or something um, because of the defense drop. And he <laughs> actually get the freeze, which is super unfortunate. He told me he was going for for the um, for the side shot, so he actually would have been in range to get revenge by Lopani, um, or almost revenge. But <laughs> I get the freeze and. Quillfish is able to 1v1 this, um, this Gothic Rita, which is pretty much unforced, but I don't think it mattered in the long run, but it's like just really unfortunate because he made like a mental mistake early in the game where he went hard Venusaur. He made, uh, I got a crit on the first switch into Gothic Rita, which kind of forced him into um, into arrest and shit like that. So um, things are not going right for Sky, which is really unforced, but um, overall, I'm not sure if they matter too much. Now he goes into guard jump and I'm like just clicking ice beam because if he sets up, I could be in a really bad spot by switching out. So he goes for the earthquake, knocks me out. I go into Licky Licky to get the ice beam off. He reveals to be bandit jump now. <laughs> go for the ice beam, put it in range of Lopani. <laughs> and um, yeah, he, he could Licky Licky, but this thing did its job and I can like just brain punch here for like <laughs> the nice, nice chip, but I don't really need it. And now Inferno comes in. He's at 22%. I, <laughs> if he scarfs, he locks himself into close combat of Lablet, and this will be GG because he goes for the Mark Punch. He's a fed up variant, as I said, and can't knock me out. You see, Fire Punch bounces. That's 30%, and my Gothita will be able to clean up. So, this is gonna be the IDM Season 2 Finals. Um, kind of unforced game for my boy Sky, but overall, a very solid game, I think. Uh, my match plan worked out really, really well, um, even though like I made a huge misplay by not taunting the. Um, the Snorlax, I, I felt like I played this match overall very, very solid. Uh, put him, put my opponent in a bad spot from the get go, and like forced him to force him to sack some months by playing aggressively but not mindlessly in the early game with Lopani by, for example, staying in on the and clicking return and shit like that. So um, yeah, I'm very happy with the way I played. Um, it's another another title for me. Very happy that I got <laughs> got to be. Uh, got to win this league back to in back to back seasons. Um, it's a it's a very solid league in my opinion. A lot of good players like Sky is a very very solid player in my opinion. Um, the other guys like Confusion, Jacko, um, Zampro, they all are very solid players, and I'm like um, really glad that I was able to win this again. <laughs> you know me like I'm uh, when I play a league, I always want to win it. I'm like kind of obsessed with winning. I hate when I have to lose, um, especially in big games. So um, this um, this finals win is a nice consolation for um, me losing an NPL finals, even though like I value the NPL more. But uh, winning this season again is really, really big. Um, also, before the season, um, I asked Scoot, who runs this league, um, to like allow a slash, and he was like, "Nah, I'm not allowing it." But if you win this league again, like in season two, you're allowed to get a slash next season. So I will be able to use this bad boy next season, which is pretty hype. That means the end for Magiana and my <laughs> Magiana's and my. Um, love story, but uh, this thing did its job. I went 22 to 3 in two seasons with this thing, and it got like a combined 40 kills or something, which is absolutely insane. Mm. I'm like, I'm not gonna lie, I'm happy the season is over because, like, right now I'm in two leagues again, and I'm like, gotta, gotta get some stuff done. So, um, I like, like, one of these leagues I had to get done so I can concentrate on the others, but. This definitely was a fun season. I had a lot of fun using Magiana and this godly squad again. Like, Lopani was fun to use again. I haven't used it in a while, but um, definitely a fun one. My bot Talon Flame put in quite some work. Quillfish and Licky Licky uh, with a godly core. Gothita was really fun to use, even though it's a, re uh, like a really tough one to use, in my opinion. But uh, definitely was fun to use. Um, 
yeah, I'm like not trying to make a recap on the squad or so, but I um, really, really had a lot of fun using this team and stunning on my opponents with Talent Flame. But anyway, good game to my boy Sky. Um, I hope that we can like play again next season and maybe in the finals or playoffs again. He is like a very, very solid battle. I have a lot of respect for him. Very good guy as well. Like we're we're friends um, for sure. He's also in the ITL. Um, really, really cool guy. <laughs> and yeah, um, I like this like finals game was really really close even though like I was like he was on the back for most of the time uh, for most of the game but I think this game could have gone either way um had I like made a misplay here and here and there but like <laughs> this time I like just um I wouldn't say outplayed him but I forced him into some place that or into some sacks that he um that he didn't have to make or that he um like like um that um Place that worked out for me because um, he was playing aggressively, predicting me to um, like going into checks in some turns, like with the double into Napoleon, for example. He lost one of his win conditions there, um, as I like just stayed in on the Incredit, for example. So um, those were some plays that usually like the, um, the double into Napoleon, for example, it was a great play on his part. But with the way I built my squad, I um, didn't have to make a, uh, a defensive play at this at this point in the game so um, that worked out for me and like <laughs> this is like it's one of those like a couple of those turns in the game that go right for you usually already mean that you can win this game so um, it's not like he played it badly I think he played this game really well but it's like just um, that some turns just worked out better for me than for him because um, because of how I designed my squad so anyway <laughs> this is IDM season 2 finals We'll definitely be back for season three, trying to cop the three feet. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know what to say. I'm uh, really happy that I got got another title for sure. But um, shout out to my boys from Mount Rushmore, like Maddie Brawl, like Zazo, and Gypsy King for their for their advice throughout the season. They always like always bounced um, some ideas around for squads that I built when I struggled struggled prepping. So that's um. Uh, Pretty, pretty solid to have if you got like a bunch of very good players that um, you can share ideas with but anyway this video is now all over for 45 minutes long so I'm um, I'm stopping it now uh, thank you guys for watching thanks for the support throughout the season and I catch you in my next video see ya